What, what have you learned about yourself as a, as a coach and a person in the, in, in the few years away? Oh, wow. <laughs> what, is, what is a start? Well, um, always deep, John. Yeah, that is deep. Uh, yeah, it's certainly, it's been a huge learning curve for me in terms of um, the presentation style, um, getting my point across, um, obviously the, the detail in trying to do all that, but I suppose being confident is the most thing. Um, back in your ability, there'll always be opinions in the room, there'll always be certain ways to do it, and I think you've got to, um, you've got to have a, a way you want to do things and a style that you want to um, implement on the team and I think you've got to be confident in yourself and you've got to trust in your knowledge and your ability to deliver that and try and push it and you will have highs and you will have lows and it's about riding the, the wave in a, in a sense because when things are going well um, you can't get too cocky and likewise when um, when things aren't going your way you've got to be copper fastened in the fact that you're you're on the right road and the right path so probably a bit of um, probably in the environment that I came from and the, the league and everything, it, it certainly doesn't allow you to, to stay still for too long. Yeah, and, and, and in terms of that experience going away, I mean, you know, there's a lot of talk recently, RFU, about coaching pathways and stuff, and it's such a small kind of community that not everybody can learn here. Um, so, like, would you prefer to learn here, or do you think it was a good thing that you had to go go away to learn? Like, you know, Prendy's done it, Rogers done it. Obviously, other other guys are doing bits, James Call, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think there's positive and negatives to both. I think you get time um, if you stay in the system in Ireland. You get time to hone your skills. You get time to, um, I suppose, be literate in terms of your computer skills etc etc and you probably hone it with a smaller group of people when you're involved in the academy um, the way I did it personally for me I felt it was important that I left Connacht I felt it was important to get away from probably the familiarity of it and the um, that emotional attachment and bond that I had to the whole place not just the players and that was the way I wanted to do things have I made mistakes of course I have, have my continuing to make mistakes daily, of course I am, but that's um, the good thing about sport and um, the day-to-day -day life that you have here, that you're constantly making mistakes, you hope you just don't make them over and over again, but look, for me it was important to get away from here and to, to try and, um, I suppose, see some other environment and get um, part of that, so that was the, the big thing for me. Yeah, I John, hope you're well, um, greetings from Cardiff. Um, it, it just it strikes me, John, that, that you're probably better equipped than anyone to kind of comment on the URC because you played more games than, than anybody else. Um, if I remember going right back like, to 2003, kind of the inception of it all. So, so what, what do you make of it now, John, in terms of obviously it's changed a lot since you first played in it, but in terms of the development and the strength of it, how do you view the competition? I think bringing in obviously the Italians was a huge um, step in the step in the right direction in terms of what uh, the competition wanted to be. Obviously, before that, it was a real Celtic environment and Celtic feel to it. The Italians kind of opened up that, and um, have they got better? Of course, they have. They've their their national squad have got better again. Um, obviously, when just before I left, the South African teams came in, and that that's opened up something completely different. Um, Three or four days ago, in the heat and the altitude, I was struggling walking up the stairs, never mind um, some of the players on the pitch. So, look, I think from where we've come from to where we are now, they're two very completely different um, uh, structures and systems. Is it fair? Are, are there issues in the league? Yes, they are, but they have learned themselves out over years. Obviously, um, there are things that needs to be looked at looked at in terms of um, rankings and how you do that that's not my that's not for me that's for someone more intelligent than me how they do it I don't know but um, certainly there's different challenges being in Edinburgh at two degrees heat and then going to 36 degrees in altitude I'll tell you it wakes your wakes your body up we're keeping our um, our whole bodies uh, under pressure at the moment but look the South Africans you just look at some of the players that were on the pitch over the weekend um, this league is getting better and better every every year and um, we're just happy that we're where we are at the moment as a, a collective and um, obviously Irish rugby are doing extremely well as well in it 
Um, one more for me. I was speaking to John, uh, Josh Turnbull at um, Cardiff last week, and he was telling me that one of the things that's keeping him going is your record. He says he's about 14 or 15 away from you. He's not sure if he's going to make it, but I, I guess he'd be somebody you would have had a few battles with on the pitch over the years. Absolutely. Um, to be fair, he's been a stalwart of Cardiff for, for a good few years, and um, I didn't realise he was that close. Um, I hope... <laughs> I hope he uh, surpasses me and goes, keeps on going. He's, um, he's still looking young. I was watching Cardiff last week or the week before, so he's, he's still churning out the big displays. So, yeah, I'd love to see him pass me out. Makes life an awful lot easier when you're not up there. <laughs> Cheers, John. All the best this weekend. Cheers. Thanks. Hi, John. How are things? Go ahead, Neil. Just, uh, Neil, is it? Yeah, sorry. How are you? Um, John, just how good is it to, to have Mac back and available this week? I'm sure Connacht fans have been desperately waiting to see him in action ever since the World Cup. Yeah, absolutely. I think like you, you don't need me to explain how good he is and just that buzz he brings around the place. Obviously, um, coming back from South Africa and um, getting into a derby game is special and then to have him and his energy around the place this week will be even better again. So, look, he's a phenomenal player. He lads lots to us and um, it won't be from lack of... Uh, of enthusiasm anyway in terms of uh, what Mac will bring on the pitch so yeah really looking forward to, to seeing him obviously um, I don't know Mac that well personally in terms of he's just been back from the World Cup he was he joined afterwards so I'm looking forward to getting to know him even um, even better over the next couple of weeks and months so yeah I can't wait to see him on the pitch and just lastly then obviously a good start of the season but took a, a bit of a beating scoreboard wise in South Africa at the weekend how confident are you that you can park that and there won't be any kind of like lingering lingering scars mentally this week? Yeah, we're disappointed. Um, I think we, we definitely could have got something out of the game. We definitely left um, a few opportunities out there. Um, different facets of the game let us down at crucial times and um, we've got to make sure that we, we remedy that very quickly because you don't get away with that against the big teams and I think um, certainly the conditions were new for me and new for the the players in terms of that altitude and the heat was was um, was phenomenal. But look, you can't blame the uh, or have excuses in terms of that. We uh, we prepared very well. We went out. Boys were fresh and we just made too many errors ultimately. And um, I think what we're happy about is we can control those some of those errors and um, we cut one or two of those out. Hopefully, um, we'd have given us a better opportunity. Uh, if I can, um, John, Sorry, Justin, thanks. Yeah. Uh, good to see you. Um, How are you? Just on Leinster, where do you feel that they're in any way vulnerable? Where can you, where can you kind of make hay? <laughs> Sign a couple of the Larry Shell players, and um, mm -hmm. I know. Look, I think um, they're they're phenomenal. Uh, obviously. Um, where they've come from and the last the consistency over the last number of years, no matter if if you go from the top ranked player down to forty odd players, they've they've got some phenomenal players there. I think um from our point of view they're they're a team now in transition um from Short Lancaster into Jack Neenbar. Um you can see the positive influence or the influence he's trying to have on them that can sometimes create uncertainties and um, I know Munster got in behind them once or twice but look there's um, without going too deep into it there's there's uh, opportunities there it's just you have to be good enough to be able to take them and um, with so many internationals they're very very good at um, plugging gaps and, and working hard for each other we've absolutely no doubt the quality that they have but yeah um, without giving too much away <laughs> Ask me Saturday evening. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Go well at the weekend. Thank you.